Johnny Dollar. Doesn't this nice weather kind of get under your skin, Johnny? Who's that? Make you want to be sitting in a boat on Lake Mojave, hauling in five and six pound bass. <laughs> Maybe a really big one? Buster. That's right, Buster Favor. Where are you? Where are you going from? Right here at Lake Mojave Resort. And Johnny, I've just picked up a new spinning rod and reel that I think you ought to give a work. Oh, on. you dog. You know I have to work for a living, and brother, I mean work. Isn't it pretty hard, huh? Too hard. Yeah, I know, but... live longer, Johnny. You know the old saying. What old saying? The time a man spends in fishing is never deducted from his lifespan. <laughs> so come on out here for a few days. Oh, but I'd love it. And if there was some insurance problem that I could use as an excuse, uh, Buster, is there? Well, yeah. You know there's something involving insurance that I ought to look into? Yeah. Then give it to me quick. Well, it's not the sort of thing I could very well explain over the phone. But unless I know what it is, what company's involved... But it's and, purely incidentally, the fish are biting like that. That's right. Okay, Buster, what am I waiting for? Bob Bailey, in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yes, truly. Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Attention, Mr. Royal J. Harkin. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the frantic fisherman matter. Roy, why kid about it? When I started this trip, I had no way of knowing that your company was involved. Knowing Buster Favor, I honestly figured that his mention of an insurance angle was just to give me a good excuse. But when you've read the facts in this report, I'm sure you'll agree that Greater Southwest should pay the old expense account without question. Yeah, and probably a nice extra fee to boot. All right. Item one, 154.50 night flight from Hartford to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. Item two, 50 bucks deposited on a rental car. I headed south and east to Lake Mojave Resort. To me, this place is the answer to a fisherman's prayer. The lake itself is over 60 miles long, averages about a mile wide. The resort is at the lower end, complete with modern accommodations, cafe, dock, well, just about everything you could ask for. Ham Pratt, the general manager, must your favor and his wife, Marilyn, are the salt of the earth. And because of it, the customers are a pretty fine lot without exception, almost. I'm going to put you here in number 18, Johnny. Good, Buster. I'll see you right at home. And here's a new spinning outfit I want you to try out. Mm. Seven foot high now. Uh-huh. That's right. And a Mitchell 350, loaded with four pound test. So, as soon as you can change your clothes, we'll hit the lake. Okay, now, this is all very nice, Buster, and I'll be changed in about five minutes. But. Good, I'll be waiting at the dock. But. Until you tell me what the insurance angle is for my coming out here or where I'm going to charge my expense account. The answer to that is out on the lake. Oh, sure. That was all just an excuse to get me out here to fish. Wrong. But as long as I'm here, I might as well... Wrong, did you say? That's what I said. Then start talking. Sure. Out on the lake. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll meet you at the dock. Thirty five on Buster's boat pulled us up the lake at an easy thirty nine. The day was clear, the weather warm. I can hardly wait to break out the tackle and get started. But Buster kept his hands up half a dozen holes where I knew to a fish. Instead, we kept going five or six miles up beyond the power line cross. And then finally we nosed into a long, narrow, L shaped coast. It extended back from the main body of the lake a couple of hundred yards, with flat, rocky walls on either side. At the end, it angled off to the left for perhaps a hundred feet. I knew there was a very deep hole there, but as we idled in toward it, I noticed another boat back there. And the man in it seemed to be using a mighty strange fishing technique. He had a long, heavy salt water rod in his hand, and from the bend in the tip of it, 
Now, how about that? Somebody beat us into this spot. Woo-hoo! Swing around and... Oh, fine, fine. Uh, I guess that wire's got loose again. The poster, that man fishing down there at the end. Don't let him notice, but keep an eye on him, Johnny. You know him? You know, I can't say that I The name is Otis Hellman. Came over here from Los Angeles. Did you see the way he was creeping up the water with that rig he's using? Yeah, I wondered about that rig. But he stopped the minute we were in the tank. Could you see what he had on the end of his line? No. He better have dropped down in his boat. So we'll just have to wait until he gets back to the dock. Mr. Faber and I went up to Sculpture Rock there on Lake Mojave. We caught fish, plenty of them. Nice big lunk of bass. We also kept an eye open for the man who'd been so frantically working the little cove on the way up, using heavy salt water tackle in a rather peculiar way. At sundown, we saw him pull out and head back to Lake Mojave Resort. So we followed him and set our speed to a ride at the dock just ahead of us. Johnny, back home same day. Yeah. Size up, Jim. Take care of these fish for us. Good night, Buster. Hi, Mr. Dollar. How'd you make out? Oh, pretty good, Jim. Here you are. Hey, you meant it all right. Evening, Mr. Hellman. How'd you do today? Nothing, Mr. Baber. Not a thing. Oh? Where were you fishing? Uh, all over the lake. Didn't I see you in the long, narrow cove above the power line? Yeah, maybe so. Hold on, Jim. Sign me up. Yes, sir. Sure. Take a look, Johnny. Yeah. Oh, I'll take care of the tackle myself. Oh, sure. Anything you say. Anything you say. Alvin quickly stuffed the tackle from the end of his line into a fish sack. But I caught a glimpse of a couple of huge triple hooks with lead collars. They were big enough, heavy enough to catch a whale. A respectable freshwater bass couldn't even get one of them into his mouth. Back in my room over a scotch and soda, Buster and I talked about it. When I asked him, Johnny, the first day he came here, he muttered something about trying to snag some carp with that rig. Snag some carp? But if you noticed up there in that cove before you saw us looking at it. Yeah, he was right over the deep hole at the end of it. The only place I've ever seen him fishing. If you can call it that. Well, he was apparently dropping those heavy gang hooks down to the bottom and then scraping them up the rocky side. Like, uh, like a grappling hook, Johnny? Right. Yeah, he's trying to snag something down there, all right, Buster. But it's certainly not carp. Have you tried dropping a line down there to see what you might hook onto? Well, you can't get near the place because he's always there. Even at night? Well, no, but Johnny, you know what I think it is? And he's just got out of jail, too, remember? I remember. Well, Johnny, I think there's a body down there. And for some reason, he's trying to bring it up. It very well be. Yes, sir. And that's why I called you. Well? Okay, Buster. I'll see what I can do. Buster had said that Hellman came here from Los Angeles. Well, there was a man in L.A. who was a veritable fount of information. Royal J. Harkins, the greatest Southwest insurance. It was evening now, so I put in a call to his home. I tied him 385 cents, and he had plenty for me. I know who Otis Hellman is, Johnny. When he and that partner of his walked out of McKinney Mining Supply with $60,000, and in cash, mind you, we had to make good on it. Is that why Hellman was sent to prison, Roy? Yeah, for completely... 
complicity in that job, though I believe his partner was the one who really did it. Who was the partner? Another old prospector named Oscar Kirkman. Kirkman? Is he still in jail? Oh, no, he disappeared, Johnny. Just before he was to go to trial. And the money? Not a penny of it was ever found. So if you have any ideas about how and where you might recover it... Very well, I... But if you're interested in Kirkman's body, I might be able to find that for you. What? Or what's left of it. And yet, how could I be sure? I mean that it was a body that Helmer was trying to locate up there in that deep little cold. Well, there was only one way to find out, and I needed some special equipment for it. So early the next morning, I climbed into my rental car. Ray Shelby Sporting Goods up in Las Vegas, Johnny. That's the closest place you know, huh? I'm afraid so. Okay, then. Here I go. Ordinarily, there'd be a dozen folks around here who could loan it to you, but most of the people right now are either fishermen or water skiers. Hey, incidentally, did Hellman go out on his boat this morning? No, Johnny, and uh, listen, yeah? Maybe my imagination is working over it's time, but listen, yeah? Hellman had breakfast good early over in the cafe. Then he sat by the window where he could look over at your room. He must have drunk a dozen cups of coffee sitting there, but he didn't budge until you came out. Huh? When you did, when you went over for breakfast, he sort of casually walked down to the boathouse. I mean, it was a little too casual. And he just stood around down there, still keeping an eye on you. Well, I don't like it. Mm, somebody must have told him who I am. Uh, not one of the help, Johnny. I warned him not to before you arrived. Well, I don't think any of the guests know it. Just the same, I think Helman's suspicious of you. And Johnny, I'll oh, stop worrying about me. Just the same, Just Johnny. Keep an eye on him. I'll see you when I get back from Las Vegas. It was nearly 100 miles to Vegas, and I made it in two hours flat. There at Shelby Sporting Goods, I spent item four, $169.18 for a complete skin diving outfit. Fins, face plate, diving tank, and regulator, a powerful waterproof headlamp, and yeah, a passionate pink pair of swim trunks. There you are, partner. Uh, you gonna do your skin diving over Lake Mead? Ah, oh, down at Mojave. Sure. The last time I outfitted a man for down there was a couple of years ago. A man called himself a miner, a prospector. Oh, yeah, I rented 150 bucks worth of stuff to him and never got it back. Now, wait a minute. You know what his name was? Sure. In spite of the fact that he gave me a phone, even, it was right after that that his picture was all over the papers uh, with his partner, that other crook named Gotus Hellman. And his name rings a bell, doesn't it, partner? It sure does, Mr. Sure. While Hellman took the rap, this one disappeared. His name was Oscar Kirkman. Mister, you've just given me a wild idea. That's all? Just wild enough to make some sense. Yeah, and help me solve a case. Solve a case? What kind? Who knows? Maybe murder, among other things. <laughs> On the drive down to Lake Mojave Resort, I stopped in Boulder City at the office of the National Park Commission. There I got hold of a topographical map of the whole area before Lake Mojave was filled up by David Sands. Then, back in my room at the resort, I went over it very carefully. You only got a minute, Johnny, before I drive over to Bullhead City. But I saw you come raring in a minute ago. And... What do you got there? Hey, come here. Huh? Look, Buster. Take a look. You're on this map. Yeah? Before the new dam filled up the lake a few years ago. Uh huh. Over here. There. Now, look here. Oh. Well, yeah, that's where that long cove is now, where Otis Hellman's been working with that phony rig of his. Uh-huh. And in the deep hole at the end of that cove, Kirkman's Folly. That is right. Kirkman had a mine there before the lake was filled, when it was all just desert land by the side of the Colorado River. And right there is where Hellman is grappling for something. Right. Kirkman disappeared, Johnny. Yes. But what's really happened is that Otis Hellman killed him and stuffed him down there in that underwater mine. Maybe. But why he wants to bring him up again, whatever is left of him. Buster, I want to use your boat. Well, sure. And if Hellman hasn't gone out fishing, has he? Oh, he's still hanging around down to dock. All right, good. Somehow, you've got to keep him from following me. Well, Hellman's seen you and me together so much that if I can have Jim fill up the fuel tank on Hellman's boat and Meantime, take out one of the sports plugs, something like that. Good, good. He'll have plenty of chances because Hellman will be watching me when I take off. What are you going to do? A little skin diving up at the end of that cove. And don't be surprised at what I may bring up. Hellman was 
still at the dock, and I thought he kept his eyes only on me as I piled the skin diving stuff into Buster's boat. Meantime, Jim went through the motions of fueling up his motor. Then I took off, and with the throttle wide open, drove up the lake to the long L-shaped cove. At the end of it, where the deep hole was, I tied up to an overhanging rock, put on swim trunks, face plates, slippers, and tanks, and gently left myself over the side. I've done a lot of skin diving here and there, but this was something new. The bright desert sunlight from above filtered through the clear, cool water and blended almost eerily the colors of the rocks in the narrow canyon that made this little cold. Where the tremendous forces of nature over millions of years have stood up in the very face of the earth and melted, then cooled and crushed and twisted the rocks into strange and wonderful shapes. And the fish, bass and crappie and bluegill, even a lazy old carp, they watched me without fear as I glided down beside them, moved gently aside, then followed me. A huge catfish casually turned aside as I flipped on the powerful beam of the headlamp. I could almost imagine a look of disdain on his face as he spied this alien being from the world above. And then I found what I was looking for. The entrance to the old Kirkman mine, carefully boarded up. But I managed to pry one of the boards loose. And I found a package wrapped in heavy plastic with a heavy coating of wax. But I could see the color of money inside. I swam back up to the surface with it, to the shadow I thought was such a fish. Tossing off my gear, I flung it in the package into the boat and grabbed the dump. Don't bother about coming aboard, Mr. Dollar. Wow. Mr. Dollar. I convinced Jim that he should replace the spark plug in my motor that you had him removed. Well, good for you. You saved me a lot of trouble, Dollar, locating and recovering the money for me. Now that I have it... Look, if you'll aim that thing yet away... Did you also find the remains of Oscar Kirkman down there? Now, listen, Helen... Uh, that don't matter. After I've killed you, you're going to join him down there. With his anchor tied to your feet. Thanks again, Mr. Oh, no, you... I kicked with all I had and overturned the boat. As he entered the water, Helen fired again. A concussion hit his throat, but he dropped it down, and with the help of the fins of my feet, I was able to turn him, to grab him around the neck and drag him down. I had taken a deep breath before capsizing his boat, and he was an older man than I. But it seemed like hours before he finally quit struggling, and with my lungs almost bursting, I carried him back up to the surface. He was still alive, but harmless. had been worried when he saw Hellman follow me up the lake. So he had borrowed a boat and was waiting for us there at the end of the cove. Otis Hellman? Well, that's up to the court. The money, of course, all 60,000 bucks of it, will go back to the company. Small expense account total, including all the incidentals I could think of and a couple of days of good fishing, six fifty eighty-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a call from an old friend. Yeah. To meet with guests in the desert. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood, and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Third in our cast were Barney Phillips, Sam Edwards, Bartlett Robinson, Horace Lewis, and Ralph Moody. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Jim Matthews speaking. <laughs>